Paul Kane was an Irish-Canadian painter who was born on September 3, 1810 in Mallow, County Cork, Ireland. Paul Kane was known for his paintings in the art movement of Romanticism. He was particularly famous for his artworks featuring First Nations peoples in the Canadian West, as well as other Native Americans in the Columbia District. Kane was able to depict the culture and way of life of these communities through his paintings, which often showcased detailed and realistic images of their daily activities and traditions. Throughout his career, Paul Kane was influenced by a variety of artistic styles and movements. He was also known to have befriended and worked with other prominent artists and figures in his time, such as George Catlin, an American artist who was also known for his depictions of Native American cultures. Kane's legacy as an artist continues to influence contemporary artwork that depicts First Nations people and their way of life. In 1845, Paul Kane embarked on his first voyage through the wild Canadian Northwest, which took him from Toronto to Sault Ste. Marie and back. Despite encountering numerous obstacles during his journey, such as harsh weather conditions and unfriendly Native American tribes, Kane managed to sketch and paint the lives of Aboriginal peoples he encountered, including their celebrations, rituals, and day-to-day -day activities. He later undertook a longer journey from Toronto across the Rocky Mountains to Fort Vancouver and Fort Victoria. This voyage lasted two years, from 1846 to 1848, during which Kane continued to produce sketches, which later became the basis for his more than 100 oil paintings. After returning from his second voyage, Paul Kane produced numerous works of art depicting Aboriginal peoples that he had encountered on his journey. These works, particularly his field sketches, are still a valuable resource for ethnologists. However, Kane often embellished his studio oil paintings, departing from the accuracy of his field sketches in favor of more dramatic scenes. His work has become part of Canadian heritage. In 1851, he was awarded a gold medal by the Ontario Society of Artists for his work. Kane continued to produce art throughout the 1850s, including The Death of Omoxysisixini in 1860, which was one of his last works before his health started to decline. Towards the end of his life, Paul Kane's health deteriorated, which affected his art production. However, he still produced a few works of art, including The Cinnaboyne Hunting Buffalo in 1865. Despite his declining health, Kane remained active in Toronto's art community, lobbying for a state-funded art college. He passed away on February 20, 1871, leaving behind a significant legacy in Canadian art history. Kane's art has since been displayed in various institutions, including the Royal Ontario Museum and the National Gallery of Canada. In conclusion, Paul Kane was a highly influential artist who produced realistic and vivid depictions of First Nations peoples in the Canadian West and the Columbia District. He was able to capture the daily activities and unique cultural traditions of these communities with incredible detail and accuracy, which have made his works an invaluable resource for ethnologists. Kane's legacy as an artist continues to inspire and influence contemporary artwork that depicts First Nations people and their way of life. Despite facing obstacles and challenges throughout his life, Kane remained dedicated to his craft and produced a significant body of work that has become part of Canadian heritage.